so first on the agenda <clears throat> is to approve the agenda. Did anybody have any anything they want to add or amend? No, I'm all set. No, I'm all set. Okay. I move we accept the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And public comment inquiry. Is there anything that's not on the current agenda that anybody would like to talk about to the board? Now's the time to do it. Uh, I have a curiosity about uh, the guys that are marking the street. Yes. Are they done? Marking the street? Yes. I doubt it. Okay. I would think there'd be some more of that this week. Things they've missed. <laughs> I, I don't know. I couldn't weigh in on that. I mean, they know what they're doing. You're talking about GW Tatro and Aldrich and Elliot, I assume. Yep. I see a lot of orange marking. I see a tiny bit of red, and I know there's a lot of electric in that street. Yeah. And I don't see enough red to come to for that to be covered everything. Okay, I'll mention that to them. So and there's maybe, more. Maybe they use the orange for something. I don't know, but. Okay, so you'd expect to see more red if it's for electric. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't remember, but I think there's some conduit. I know some of that stuff's supposed to be marked as conduit, and there's some that comes across the street in front of the hardware, and they got nothing marked there at all. And it could be they're only doing the piece. That they're starting down by the feed store, down by or feed store, Green Mountain Feed. Excuse me. Maybe they're just doing a little bit, but I'll ask. I would say the streets marked from the feeds all the way to the parking lot. Is it okay? All right, I'll ask him because I don't know. Um, what would orange normally be? Well, that would be uh, orange is like communications, conduits, and fiber optic. Okay. All right. So I'll let him know you and uh, see what they have to say. Yeah. So thank you. We don't want anybody digging into any of that stuff. No, no, Ooh. we don't. <clears throat> All right, anything else? Nope. Okay, hearing none, we'll uh, move on. And we don't have any uh, scheduled appointments this evening, uh, but uh, we do have the Central Vermont Quad Runners um, that would like permission to use the same roads as last year. And Therese, do we really have a map? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, we have a map on file. I think you send us the same map every year, don't you, Chuck? Yes. Yeah, yep. that's what I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And nothing's changed? No. no. Yeah. Okay. So it, it should be probably an easy one. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to um, accept the Central Vermont Quad Runners permission to use the same roads as they did in 2019. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Are there any complaints or any issues you guys want to address that we need to know about? Do you guys have any issues that you have to deal with with the COVID uh, situation? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, the state has given us permission to work on our trails starting May 1st. They've given us permission to uh, uh, open our trails the 15th of May, which is normal for us. And they've given us guidelines. Uh, we're not supposed, to, as of right now, we're not supposed to have any club rides, big rides like that. And if we have work details, we're supposed to wear a mask and stay six feet apart and be in small groups of two or three. That's what we've got so far. Some of that could change as we go, go along a little bit. But. Yeah, that makes sense. That's pretty much what everybody's having to do. So that kind yeah. of makes sense. Yeah. But I haven't heard anything. I haven't had any complaints, any issues, nobody, nothing. Well, if you, I, I know that I talked to Alex Reister and he was interested in maybe marking some of the trails, getting 911 addresses. I know that the Snowmobile Club has access to Vast, which has, um, you know, an app so that if someone gets lost, they can figure out where they are. Have you guys had any requests about that? 
So our trail system in Bethel is not on the map, um, but our Stockbridge trail <laughs> system, of course, is on the map. And um, that trail system in Stockbridge, um, if you go to Polaris Ride Command, um, it actually gives you GPS coordinates for each intersection. Um, nice. We would like to do that with the Bethel trail system uh, eventually, um, but it's not to that point yet. So we're working on it. There you go. Well, that's good to know. I wasn't sure. I know that um, Alex, I guess they've had some times where they just want to make sure that if someone gets injured, they know, you know, they can figure out where they are, <laughs> especially yeah. for snowmobilers. That's probably right. They're probably a lot out of staters where you guys are probably more locals. Uh, so no, you know where you are. <laughs> uh, we get a lot of different people. Do you? I wasn't sure. Snow machiners tend to ride a little faster because they can. It's a little yeah, hard yeah. to go very fast on a class four road or, or trail, you know, with a four wheeler. It's, it's a little different riding, but yeah. not saying that people can't get hurt, but. Right. I haven't heard a single complaint or issue or anything about it, so. We'd just like to remind you, if you ever have anything, please call us because we would like to know. Uh, oh, know sure. Last year, Dave brought up something that we had neglected about some signs, and I think we did a pretty good job last year getting those up, but that's the kind of things that we need to know about, you know. Absolutely. I'll just give them your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hard to find. <laughs> Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Um, Be well. Can Me I too. get the minutes off from the town site? You will, it. yeah. Okay, because I need it for- Yeah, uh, they'll be- Vasa. Oh, sure. Yeah, they'll be up by Friday at the latest. Okay, awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. All Have right. a good night. Good evening, good evening. stay safe. All right. And next up we have the Motion to reappoint Oscar Gardner for one year as constable. So yeah, he mentioned to me the other day that his um, anniversary was May 15th. And so I said, all right, I'd put it on the agenda. Obviously you have a report here. Um, and once we meet again in person, we'll have him come along and, and see us. So I had Kelly pull some different reporting for you this time. Um, but, uh, you know, he's been doing good. Obviously, I talked to him today or we exchanged an email. He was looking into something for me, um, <clears throat> some just complaints about and about uh, animals. So he was dealing with that. And he still continues to work for Royalton and seems to be able to fit us in just fine. So you don't have a lot of people banging down your door to be constable either. So <laughs> do we have do we have a schedule for him? Does he have a regular schedule? I think it's. I think it's on the website. Yeah, I think that Kelly keeps it on the website. So if you, um, he uses a software that he developed. So I believe it's on the website. If I need him, I just email him or call him. So I don't really go on to scope it out, but I'm quite certain someone emailed me the other day and said they knew he was on because of the white website, so. Okay. All right. So if we're good with that, um, I just entertain a motion to accept the reappointment of Oscar for one year. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. And then next up we have um, Therese there. Uh, some permission to move some capital highway money temporarily um, so that she can get some work done the tail end of this but, um, we had appropriated the money and then so I think it's just a matter of from what she's saying is borrowing from the capital fund now early and then yep. once the new budget season comes she would return it back over yep it's in order to correct fix that dry hydrant 
Well, that mm -hmm. mess that was created up by the dry hydrant on G Birdie. So um, the contractor has time to do it now. So, and obviously I don't have the money in the budget. So I was hoping for permission to just spend the money now. And then as soon as when July rolls around, I'll just put the money back mm -hmm. because we have budgeted for it and the budget passed. I just, I need the money right now <laughs> and uh, I can't wait till July. Plus two, honestly, I would like to get it done and we can get it seated and just get this whole debacle behind us. Now, um, based on that, do we have a written agreement between them and us on this work? And nope, there wasn't one before either. And no, just, um, you know, so I'm only just thinking because this has come around, you know. Again, yeah, we've outlined the scope in emails, but I can, I will definitely make sure that I have it in writing and just get them to sign off on the agreement because right now they've agreed to. Um, we'll dig it, we'll put it in the culvert, but they're gonna pay for any material <clears throat> that we need, um, replacing the upsizing again, the um, culvert. Obviously we need to buy the drain for the pond, but at the same time, we need to make sure the dry hydrant works because after all this, nobody ever tested the dry hydrant. So we need to work, <laughs> so we need to keep my fingers crossed that works. But I think I've outlined the scope in an email, Chris, but I'll double check. So if not, I will make sure that the scope of that, the work is outlined and then I get them to sign off on it. Cause we're gonna have a meeting on site here and I'm hoping um, later in May or early June. And then, and then once this work is completed, we're done. That, that leaves the town harmless now? Yes, we are done, yep. We just, you know, again, we just may want to get all that in writing and- No, that's a good idea. No, because I, mean, I know we, you know. Yeah. Who's doing the work, Therese? Derek Aldrigetti. Okay. So he's doing the work. Um, Ryan Slack was kind enough to, he's, I'm hopefully going to get a piece of 30 inch culvert from them because for some reason we downsized from a 30 inch culvert to a 15 inch and obviously we need to go back to 30. So um, I think I'm going to be able to get a piece of culvert from him for no cost and hopefully that the ground was where the culvert went in was good material but if it's not Gia Birdies have agreed to pay for the material that goes in the ground there. Um, then for us we just need to come up with a system to actually make it so the pond drain works. So, but before we do any of that, we're gonna test the dry hydrant. <laughs> so if that doesn't work, then you'll probably see my head explode uh, from the town office all over Bethel. <laughs> so, <laughs> or at least hear me yelling. I'll let you guys know if it hits. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop, there goes Teresa's head. <laughs> that must be a bad thing. <laughs> So, um, but that's a great idea, Chris. I'll make sure it's in writing and that we sign, you know, they sign off on it because we can't keep going back and do it. I mean, yeah. I understand why we are where we are because it wasn't done correctly, but I don't want to go back at this. Once we're done, we're done. Right. That way so they, they're going to be there so they can sign off on the work as it goes along. They chose the contractor. So, you know, kind of everything to give them some comfort level there. Right. Yes. Yeah, we've spent enough money there. Yeah, amen. Okay. So that's my, why I want to spend the money now and then put it back when we're done. Yeah. Or it, when the new fiscal year comes. Any of the board members have any issues with borrowing the money here a month ahead of time? I yeah. have to ask because yeah. only only select board members can sign up, can allow authorized capital fund spending. Now, now we just got to think of what, what we need back from Teresa and exchange. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Do we have any pound projects we want done? Pound of flesh. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I don't know if you need a motion or not, or. I think so. Just for the, it would look okay. better for the minutes. So I would um, entertain a motion to allow Therese to borrow $20,000 from the Capitol Highway. I don't think we like that wording. Teresa isn't going to borrow any money. <laughs> How about to spend right. money, to spend money from the Capitol for a project. I don't know. That, that's a little. Yeah, to move, so I'd entertain a motion to, to move um, 20,000 from the Capitol Highway Fund uh, to be used in projects prior to the uh, 2021 budget and once the 2021 budget comes, the money would be diverted back into the capital highway fund. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds better. 
So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Did you get all that, Lisa? <laughs> I can tweak it, Lisa, if you need. Okay, so I've got motion to allow the town to spend money from the Capital Highway Fund to be used in projects prior to the 2021 budget. The money will be reimbursed in the new fiscal year. Um, Lindley um, did the motion and Paul did the second. Yeah. Was it Paul? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> And then we had the discussion on the draft Doug ordinance. This is one of those things that we needed to update. One of them, the other one is the personnel policy, but that's a bigger project. Um, but I thought we've had several dog complaints. Um, so I figured this would be a good thing to start with. So as I said in my report, I had Dietrich, um, I gave her the VLCT ordinance, draft model ordinance, we went over that, and then I had her read some of the other ordinances. Mm -hmm. um, this also takes into consideration one of the issues that Chris had brought up, and Lindley, I think, had agreed to, and I know that hmm, Dietrich has over at the rec field, which is, you know, failure for people to pick up dog waste. Um, she... Um, so I, I actually thought it was good. I read it after she um, did it. I had a couple of minor questions. That was it. She left a couple blanks where things to talk about. And certainly she had picked some prices from other ordinances about the offenses. And um, so she wasn't sure about, you know, how y'all felt about that. But I don't know if there's any specific questions and obviously it's going to be easier to do an ordinance once we meet in person and then we can have <clears throat> the hearings put in the paper, but I figured we might as well get the process started. Can you explain, um, you know, where, where there are fees, there's sort of the two columns and one is the, the actual offense and one is the waiver. What exactly is the waiver? The waiver is that they could pay that in, in, in lieu of, um, if they didn't want to fight fight it, and I feel, I'm looking through because I feel like that's defined somewhere in here, or maybe it, it was it was, it was defined, but it didn't make a lot of sense because it was as though they didn't want to litigate it. But wouldn't the offense and the fee be like like a ticket? You pay it, and if you chose to fight it, then you could have the waiver fee. But the way it was written, it sounded almost backwards. From that, and that's, that was my confusion. Okay, I think yeah, I think what they're saying is basically yeah, if you don't contest, if you <clears throat> if you agree that you're wrong and that you have violated the ordinance, you can pay the waiver fee. If you um, want to fight your ticket, you're going to pay the larger amount. If you fight your ticket and you lose, and you lose, oh, you're going to pay the larger that, amount. That was, yes. That was, mm -hmm. Which Not, is the way it is if you get a traffic ticket. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if anybody, you know, maybe the fees were a little high. I wasn't really sure what people were thinking. These were just similar to what other towns, um, you know, obviously we wanted the first offense to always just be a written warning. So hopefully that will just correct the behavior. Who's going to enforce? <clears throat> uh, so part of it is the... Um, is Oscar or myself, I think it says right here, enforcement officer means town constable, police officer, town manager, animal control officer, humane officer, any other person designated by the select board. So generally it would be most likely be myself or Oscar. And how are you gonna get payment? You issue a municipal ticket and it goes, gets filed with a judicial bureau. So it's really okay. just like a traffic ticket. Do we okay. get a booklet of those? <laughs> you do? No, yeah, you can. I thought I was like, is she kidding? Yeah, actually you can, um, that they can. But for him, obviously he already has a ticket pad. So he would deal, you know, he could do that. Well, Neil Fox had mentioned at one point that he was dealing with a lot of getting calls, <clears throat> excuse me, getting calls about dog bites and things like that. Is he yep. part Actually, of the, the health officer is the first call because if if someone takes 
gets bit by a dog and they go to the emergency room, then the emergency room always contacts the health officer <laughs> first. So he would be the first person to get a call, but he's not in a dog. He's not um, animal control officer. He's not a dog officer. So he doesn't, he's not named in here because we wouldn't expect him to enforce okay. this. All right. So he would turn it over to Oscar or you or. Yep. Yep. He calls and um, or he, yeah, because if it's, there's an investigation that needs to be done and the health officer can do that, can investigate, you know, a dog bite. Sometimes it, you know, he's called before and sometimes it's um, a dog that has, someone has come over to the house and the dog's bitten them on basically on the dog's property. So that's a different, a yeah. different thing. And I think too, it lays out for you is, um, you know, a, a neglect. It also lays out if you have, you know, um, dog bites on town property and all that, because there is, that's a process and a half. And, and obviously, you know, you have the authority to have a dog destroyed. Um, obviously that's nothing anybody rushes into, but mm -hmm. if it becomes um, <clears throat> a situation where a dog is loose and attacks somebody on town property, then you know, that's a big deal. Then you're yeah. dealing with a public safety issue. Yeah. For the most part, it seems or like our personal. complaints. What was that, Mo? Or on personal property, not just town property. Well, if you, if you go to your neighbors and your neighbor's dog bites you and you're on the dog's property, it's a different kind of set of rules versus- If my neighbor's dog comes over to my property- Oh place, yeah, then, well, yeah. Absolutely. That's the idea of this so that uh, everybody has got their dog rabies shots updated so that it's That's a lot right. easier for a police officer. Well, then Absolutely. they also have a civil mm -hmm. angle too if they wanted to pursue that. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. There is always a civil, civil matter. But for us, I think the biggest complaints we've got is obviously dog waste. That's been you know, a problem for people not picking up dog waste. Um, I've had a couple of issues about dogs, but really they've the one in particular that I've had has really just been kind of a landlord tenant dispute. So um, that kind of goes both ways. I think that if the, I think in hindsight, the landlord should have put in the lease that he didn't want pets. And we had uh, many issues with dogs. I mean, I, I remember when I first got on the board at that time, there was kind of an ongoing thing between two um, property owners and the um, constables called up there quite often in regards to the animals but um you know does oscar have a record on how many in the last year he's dealt with i think or, right now he's dealing with two different ones that i've given him and they're both the same sort of thing chris where it's the two neighbors <clears throat> and that have been kind of going back and forth so that's what he has right now i really since the initial one um when i came to work for bethel um as finance person that one was i heard about that one but um i haven't really had a lot of dog issues no are there many uh non-licensed dogs in the town now or, or are we caught up on that probably right this minute there's a lot that aren't just because of covid and everything you know what's going on and we have not i i'm not aware of bethel doing a dog census either um, that's one of the things statutorily that you can have your dog, your dog catcher can do for you is do a, is to do a dog census, but I think that's pretty difficult. So, um, mm -hmm. it's really going to be kind of a social media push, I think is going to be for Pam after, you know, once everybody kind of opens up a little bit is for her to start putting stuff on Facebook, reminding people that if they have a dog, that it needs to be registered. She also can send a postcard out to all the owners from the prior year and remind them if they have not registered their dog. I assume she does that, but I don't know, but I can find out. I think they did that a couple, three years ago, didn't they, Chris? I can't remember. You're supposed to do it every year, so I'll ask her about it. Um, I'll make a note, send postcard to unregistered dogs and that's how you find out if somebody has moved or you know unfortunately a dog has passed away or something um so i'll make a note to send a postcard to unregistered dog and have her do a push on facebook um to get dogs registered 
and to maybe remind their friends to, to register the dogs. Will they be offering another rabies clinic? I don't know. I think I heard Tim ask Pam the other day and she didn't know. So I think everybody's kind of waiting with bated breath to see what the governor is going to do on Friday. So um, I don't know if she is, but I do know some people had asked about that. So um, I'll put a note for her also rabies clinic question mark, because maybe once the governor opens up a little bit, um, maybe the maybe the Bethel uh, vet will be willing to do that. I do think that's a good deal and people take really good, you know, take advantage of that. And I know from personal experience from doing hosting those myself in another town is you get a lot of people who come in and, and do that and cats, dogs. And so I'll see if she can reach out to the um, Bethel Animal Hospital and see if they'll be willing to do it. Okay. So did anybody have any, is there anything wrong in the ordinance or weird or, you know, there's obviously a couple of blanks we need to fill in. Um, Back to my confusion about the waivers, because I think this is part of what my confusion was, was if the first offense is a written warning, why yeah, is there a fee if you choose to waive? Oh, it should be zero. That's a good point. I'll make mm -hmm. a note. Do we bump all of those down a tier? I think it or looks like they do half, so I can... Um, I'll take that out. I think we bump them down a tier. Okay. Yeah, I can see why. I mean, a hundred dollars you're doing half for fifty. Yeah. For all those. Um, yeah, I think that might have just been why I was so confused by. Okay, no, that makes sense. So you want to bump them all to the waiver? So it's zero twenty-five dollars fifty for no matter what the deal is, no matter the. And I don't know. I'm of the mind that if somebody's done that offense twice they should be paying a fee for it they clearly were warned once and given the freebie why why make it only 25 dollars so you think the second offense the waiver fee should be 50. yeah i'm fine with leaving it at that mm -hmm. okay yeah. i agree yeah Ooh. okay all right i'll make a note <laughs> And then on under on page two, um, public nuisance violation number four, a dog that disturbs the quiet comfort repose of others by barking, whiling, you know, for a continuous blank amount of minutes or more. I know in Brookfield, I think it's 30 minutes. I'm not sure what your feeling is for an amount of time in there that you want to hear somebody's dog carrying on. <laughs> I don't know, Chris, what's Especially your Matt, I'll, I'll, I'll go along with 30 minutes. <laughs> That's how long does Brady oh, whine and cry and carry on outside? <laughs> uh, he's good outside. He'll, he'll whine inside. He's a big whiner, but outside he's good. You have to put up with that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Your neighbors don't care. Right, so they don't care. Is 30 minutes what people think or? No. Well, I think 30 minutes is good in general. I mean, yeah. we have a neighborhood dog over my way here that the issue is the time of day as opposed to the length of time. Oh, geez. It's a 5.30 in the morning and mm -hmm. quarter of 10 at night kind of thing. Nice. Try, try 11.30, 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then on page three, it's under penalties and cost. Um, so for violations, basically they want to know a subsequent violation that's identical to and that occurs within. So basically they want to know if somebody for, fails to pick up their dog waste, and then they get ticketed or talked to for that. And then they do it again within a month or something um, of a previous violation. So they want to know when you want to step up from, from the first offense to the second offense. How many weeks or months in between of a previous violation shall be considered a higher offense? Any subsequent identical violation that occurs within blank months of a previous one shall be considered a new first offense. So, so for example, we could say that um, if you got the first offense, which is the written warning, and then the second offense occurs within a month or two or three or three, then that's considered, you know, the higher offense. So you want to do three months? 
No, I, I say no less than that. Yeah, I was leaning more towards six months. Okay. I think somebody that's going to be a chronic offender of not picking up after their dog, if they learn that they can do it, every, you know, every right. three months, they're going to abuse that system. Um, okay. So we could do six months there. And then any subsequent identical violation that occurs after so many months of a previous violation is considered a new offense. So do you want to give people, so if they, if they did the offense, but then they don't do it again for two years or 18 months, or do you just want to remove that entirely? So it's never a new offense. It's always builds on the first offense. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take that out of there. I think. I mean, I think if somebody has an offense and then say two years later has another offense, that, that should be a first time offense Yeah, rather than a second Okay. There should be a timeline in there. I don't, I don't know if maybe we say it's all inside a, it's kind of like, you know, you got the hands-free law, right? And if you yeah. get, you know, two within two years, that jumps up, you know, yeah. third one could be imprisonment. So, um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's all tied to within a year or, you know, there should so be of option to restart the clock you think there should be I think after so. after a year well I, I mean whatever that time is I mean. well we need to decide yeah because there's a blank there that's what I'm, we're trying to have any subsequent identical violation that occurs after blank months of a previous violation shall be considered a new offense now we're saying already that if they do it if they don't pick up dog waste and then within six months they don't pick it up again that makes it a second offense so how long are you going to give them until they start the clock all over again 24 months 24 months mm -hmm. i could agree i could agree with that yeah i mean i'm kind of more of a year person but so somebody that doesn't follow these instructions don't need to have a dog anyways <laughs> <laughs> Does this go for children too? <laughs> yeah. You can pick up after your children. <laughs> yeah. Clean All up right. that waste on the sidewalk. There you go. All right, let's see. So I mean, well, I mean guess what happens what happens after the third offense if it happens again within six months or, or within a year? Within, within a year. Months. Yeah. What happens after the third offense? Because You've gotten to the point where you've cited them three times now. Right. What you can do is you have, it, it's section nine, nine it kicks in. The town of Bethel retains the right to impound a dog as a last resort if all other means to rectify situations listed in the ordinance have been exhausted. So you could then impound the dog. So, and if, I will we tell put, you so if we put a number in that, you know, a year or two years mm -hmm. in that last slot, how does that impact that time period between the third offense and that? Um, well, basically, if someone is if someone is a regular <clears throat> abuser of some section of the ordinance, and you get them, you know, within you know a year, you've picked them up four times or cited them four times for it. You have the right to impound a dog, but frankly, if it's dog waste you know, you're probably not going to go to that extreme. You're probably just going to keep no. finding these people and making them pay. I had asked Dietrich mm -hmm. after looking at the municipal or um, BLCT's model ordinance, the mm -hmm. last thing that you want to do is to trust me is to impound a dog because we become responsible for that. And then we have to pay the vet bills and we got to pay mm -hmm. the vet. And it's a whole thing trying to get it back, especially if the owner doesn't want the dog, then we eat all the charges and then we have to send them over to the Lucy, um, McKenzie. Lucy what, Lisa? McKenzie. Lucy McKenzie, thank you. Lucy McKenzie's um, society, Humane Society. So we that's had one always a, a last resort, is impounding a dog. We had one a couple of years ago that cost us $1,000 in town. I remember yeah. that dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I actually have spoken to them since, and now they call mm -hmm. me. They had a dog, and um, they were like they wanted to do a couple things to the dog. And I'm like, oh, let's talk it through, because I'm not paying for this. We because you know our luck it's a dog from another town somebody picks it up on and you know just as it's crossed over the border into bethel all of a sudden we're responsible for the dog so um could 
could we add a, a piece to section nine that basically allows us to, um, you know, take that third offense and continue that instead of going to the resorting to impounding on a fourth offense. And it doesn't say we will impound on a fourth offense. It says we retain the right to impound a dog as a last resort. So basically you want to say third offense on like a continue right. third, third and, and something. Yeah, answer, this is sort of to answer Paul's question of like yeah. what happens on the fourth offense. So basically subsequent here. offenses. Perfect. That's the perfect word, subsequent. Great. I'm just Thanks. wondering if we put a number in that 24 months or a year or whatever, how does that impact you resetting the clock, basically? And you're, you've got a time lag between the, the last offense and, and that number there. What happens during that time period if it occurs again? Um, it says here that, um, so basically an identical violation that a that if they keep doing it, it's, you know, within, in less than 24 months, then it's gonna continue to build on it. But basically what we're mm -hmm. saying is, if, uh, if the first, if there's a distance between the first offense and then it doesn't happen again for 24 months, we're gonna start the clock over. If it continues to happen, the sa that section just never kicks in mm -hmm. because they're um, always gonna be in violation of the ordinance. Okay, yep. In other words, the 24, month time clock resets at every offense. Right. Okay. Can we put something in this that if we impound an animal that the owner's responsible for all costs? Yep, and it is in here. Um, it says that the public notice will state that unless the owner claims the dog and pays all the expenses incurred, um, then the town may place the dog in adoptive home or transfer it to the Humane Society. So it well, does- What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is they should be financially uh, responsible, responsible for any, 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 any money that cost us the town. Right, it says under release from impoundment to owner, any impounded dog right. shall be released only after payment of all the penalties and impoundment fees. But, yeah, but they won't pay. Mo, are you and they don't get the dog back. We yeah, but then the we're responsible for it. Right, we base, yeah, but most people want their dog back. So, I mean, I've done it a bunch yeah, of times. We usually hold them hostage until they get might, You know, you may want to, I mean, unfortunately, there aren't some people out there. I mean, I think what Mo's trying to get at is, you know, if, if an animal does, you know, let's say racks up a thousand dollar bill with the town of Bethel, and the people say, "Yeah, well, we don't want it." You know, there should be some sort of penalty on their end, regardless if they're going to keep the animal or not. So, so basically, even if they want their dog back or not, they should they should be responsible for the financial charges at that point. All right, so let me look at it. Let me see the wording here. Um, I mean, it's your responsibility as a, you know, an owner or. It does say here, though, that um, the owner of a dog transferred to another's care shall remain liable for all expenses incurred by the town for treatment, boarding, and care of the dog during for the duration of its impoundment and any other expenses. So it's still, even if, even if I give the dog to somebody else, the original owner is still liable. So we could go to small claims court and get the money. Is that what you mean, Mo? Yeah, we should have a recourse, whether it's civil or whatever, to get our money back. Yep, and that's what it says here, really under the impoundment, that they're still liable. So I would take someone to small claims court based on this ordinance. But I will double check the language. Um, I'll double check another ordinance for the language to make sure that that's enough to get us into. I mean, I'm sure anything's enough to get us into small claims court, but make sure we win if we go. <laughs> so. <laughs> exactly. um, yeah, all right, I'll make a note on here to make sure um, it, that the language is strong enough for small claims court. Um, and I would I would say now that I understand that the, the second set of um, months that we were discussing, that only gets reset if they haven't had a, a subsequent offense, I would go with um, 
Chris's idea of a year, because if they've managed to not have an offense within a year, then you can reset the clock versus if they've had a subsequent offense, then it resets the clock for another year. You okay. know, I mean, All I'd right. be happy with that. Okay, I'll change it to 12 months. <clears throat> yeah, I like the year too, yep. Okay, I will change that. Um, anything else? Looks good. Well, why don't you add those notes, Therese, and then we'll take another look at it. And yeah, I figured we'd wait till we're back in session, just like the trash ordinance, Chris. Yeah. So that way you can we can you know do the hearing. We got to put it in the newspaper because ordinances are special right. that way. So yep, sounds good. Any further discussion on dog ordinance? Okay. Move on to the COVID-19 discussion. Therese can get us caught up on. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure I can anymore. Um, so all the employees have been trained. We took all the, the um, they took the 20 minute what, online class. I took the AGC class and Lindley took it, right? So Lindley's a trainer, Chris Jarvis took it. So um, I thought it was interesting actually and gave me some additional information more than the, just the quick um, you know, 20 minute slideshow. Um, I have ordered neck gaiters for people because you know the on off of the mask, at least it's up and down for the neck because it's really was hot for the guys out doing um, roadside work. Not to mention a lot of them are complaining about just the elastic behind the ears and stuff. So I've got those on order. That was a recommendation that kind of came out in the AGC class. Um, Dietrich's in the process of creating signs right now for the rec field, which were in the governor's last order, basically um, play safe. And um, so basically arrive, play, leave and clean up after yourself. So we're still waiting at this point. The pool has not been, um, is not open and not allowed to be open at this point. So we're still waiting to see what that's going to look like for us. Um, so she was busy today, but she's going to get some signage out there um, tomorrow, basically letting people know if you're going to use it, it's use at your own risk and you need to clean up after yourself and you need to wipe things down and uh, that sort of thing. Um, let's see. I have spoken to the contractor, so I'm hoping that the um, uh, sneeze guard, that's a horrible word, but are in place for the front desk and the town clerk's office before we open on May 18th. That's the hope. Um, and at this point, we don't know what the opening is going to look like. If it did say in the legislation recently that town offices can require people to wear a mask. Um, we do have signage prepared to go on the door that basically says we're going to have one person in, in line at, at, the, at a time. So if you see someone at the desk through the window, please wait outside until it's your turn. I'm going to take the chairs out of the lobby so nobody sits there. I'm also going to remove the mailbox. So I'm going to have the employees, I think, come in the handicap entrance to my office versus going through the front door, I think. I'm going to try to figure that out, but kind of see what the governor has to say on Friday. The other thing that was part of that was um, you saw, I put a copy of S-344, which the governor has signed, um, stating that uh, select boards have the authority to establish grace periods, decrease or waive interest and penalty, um, that sort of thing. I think at this point, um, and, and this is my opinion, that the government flooded Vermont with enough money that there is, people are getting unemployment, uh, even subcontractors uh, have qualified for unemployment. Uh, there was a payroll protection. So I think that there's going to be some people who did not qualify for that, who would certainly deserve assistance and they could certainly go to the board of abatement. But for the most part, I don't think that's the case. And I think that you should stick with the 8% penalty, 1% interest. Um, I do think that when it comes to our August 15th taxes, that is probably going to have to change since the governor moved the homestead declaration to July 15th. Um, the statute is clear. I need to issue tax bills 30 days prior to the due date. And I'm not going to be able to do that. 
because if we're not, if we, ha I'm not gonna be able to do that if we have a bunch of outstanding homestead declarations. If we have a bunch of outstanding homestead declarations and you issue the tax bill, then um, we have to do a ton of reprints and that's gonna be crazy and people get confused about what they owe and that sort of thing. So, I mean, and obviously we can cross that bridge when we get to it, but right now, I ran an ad in the newspaper for third for three weeks saying that taxes were due Friday. They could drop them off through the door. They could mail them post bark and by Friday. We had a sign out front, which somebody actually ran over with their car. Uh, so it's kind of mangled, but it's still there. Um, but again, that's my opinion. I'm not sure how you all feel about waiving the interest and penalty. I will say I had a gentleman speak to me the other day I emailed him a payment arrangement and explained to him that he could try for an abatement, but I didn't see him getting it because he has an asset. He has a house and he has acreage. So the BCA is not going to consider him having the inability to pay his taxes when in fact he probably could sell a piece of land or he has options, you know, a home equity loan or whatever. So, but I did outline the process of abatement for him. So I'm not sure how you all feel about moving forward with the interest and penalty charges. It'd be on a case by case basis, I'd think, wouldn't you? Whether you grant abatement or not, but it, the penalty, you know, basically was voted on. We all know that that's, that's the current regulation is it's 8% penalty, 1% interest. And we usually charge that um, obviously right after it's due, if they miss their payment and they didn't send in a postmark, then they, you know, they're immediately charged 9%. And the, and the ability of the select board to make those possible changes is only to the municipal side of the tax bill, okay. not the education mm -hmm. side. No, actually, I thought that as well, because I was completely, <laughs> I, the wording of it is crazy. Um, I thought the mm -hmm. same thing, Paul. So I actually reached out to someone at VLCT and asked her, because I said, why in, in the heck did the legislature tell us we could do one or the other because our software won't let it divvy it up. And she said the way it was written with or, she said it's really, it's it's both. So you would have the ability to move both the uh, municipal tax and the education, because I read it exactly the same way you yeah, did. Yeah, I don't see that in the wording, but okay. Yeah, that's why I called, I emailed Gwen and asked her at BLCT and she said, Yes, the, us as lay people would write it and or, and she said, but that's not the way they wrote it, but that was, that's how she said we, we can interpret it. Okay. So Therese, can you clarify, um, let, let's play out the scenario that we as a board choose not to do anything with uh, penalties and interest. Could an individual go to the BCA and ask for the penalties and interest to be abated? Not necessarily the taxes, just the penalties, or is that really just our decision and the BCA is only about abating the, the taxes, the amount of the taxes? No, the, the, the Board of Abatement can do any interest, penalties, or the taxes, uh, any one of the three or a combination or part of any of those. So um, essentially what Mo was asking, which was, could we do it by a case by case basis? That would be going to the BCA. The BCA can do it by a case by case basis, but we can't charge interest and penalty by a case by case. We have to go across the board and do that. And, and, and all but there's also very specific reasons why you can abate property yes. taxes. If somebody yep. died insolvent, yeah. If um, there was a manifest error of the listers, if they had a mobile home that was moved out of the area, if their veterans exemption didn't go forward, there is one that says if they can't, basically if they can't afford it. Yeah, However, no um, that would have to be, that would be to me would be, um, have to be a really egregious situation that they would have to really prove that they couldn't mm -hmm. afford it. Because obviously if you own a home, you have property, you have a big asset. Yeah, and it's actually not the BCA. It's actually the, the Board of Abatement, which is a little different than the BCA because it has the listers as part of the, right. the Board of yeah, Abatement. He, and they're not part of the BCA. 
He's right. So it comes out. It's it's um, it's all of you because your part, and it's the justice of the peace and yep. and the listers. Yeah. So what do you think, Dave? I think we leave it as we we already discussed this. Eight percent and one the eight and one. <laughs> and if, they, if they're not happy, they can go to the board of abatement. But I think to to have an across the board thing, I think that works fine for me. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. You know, no, I agree too. That's what the board of abatement's for. If if somebody uh, really does need to go, then that's the channel to do it. So. Mo, what do you think? I didn't hear you. No, I said I agree with that. Okay. All right. Then then we'll revisit the August topic. It it'll depend on um I've spoken to Louise a week ago about how many people haven't filed their homestead declarations. So if we can get people to get their homestead mm -hmm. declarations filed, then we may be okay with issuing tax bills and sticking with the August 15th payment. But last time I talked to Louise, she still had quite a few people who hadn't filed and it's a whole thing with current use and it just becomes an issue. And then people get very confused when you're uh, sending you know, multiple bills to them, so. Was it, isn't there a cutoff period for the homestead? Wasn't it? It's July 15th. And that's when I would have uh, already had tax bills in the mail by then. Um, so we'll see. We'll have to kind of play that by ear, which is, I think, what I said in the, I just wanted to let you know, you know, okay. I hope we don't have to, but I don't know. We'll see. All right. So as far as COVID-19, um, I feel like it's you know going pretty well. I told Kelly the other day that there was no porta potty will go in this year at um, Peavine Park because if you put a porta potty in, you're going to clean it. You have to clean it twice a day. So that's not going to happen this year. So there won't be any portalettes. Um, and and last year, I'm not even sure how much it was used. We had somebody who was living down there stringing their laundry from the door. So I don't know how much it was used for any other purpose, but um, unfortunately that's just one thing that's come from it. Um, and other than that, everybody's got hand sanitizer, masks, you know, we're moving forward with the, I've got the net gator order. I've got, um, you know, we've, everybody's been trained. So I don't, does anybody have any specific questions about COVID or what we're doing? Okay. And that's all I have for COVID, Chris. Okay. Oh, wait, no, Chris, we were uh, meeting, the meetings, future meetings. I don't know what's gonna happen. We have to wait for the governor. Um, so, it, you know, our probably starting in June, our meetings will be able to have them in person. Right. But that depends on what the governor changes. If it's only 10 people, maybe we still have Zoom available for people that can't case we have over 10. I'm not really sure. We're going to have to kind of play that by ear. Yeah, right now it's 10. Yeah, so we don't know what he's going to do on Friday. This, work, this works for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you come to our meetings now with a thermos, we'll be, we'll be sniffing it. <laughs> we'll have Oscar checking it for you. Yeah, yeah. You'll be sharing. We'll all taste it. Yeah, that's right. I'll bring a big thermos so I can share. There you go. Mine did. <clears throat> All right. Anything further on that? Nope. Okay. And we have the update in the waterline project. So uh, GW Tatro and Aldrich Nelly have started last week with just a couple of guys, and they've been working with Tim to create a plan. Um, we have done all of the uh, first round of the lead testing for all the galvanized services because as you know that's part of the con part of the deal is um we get the 100 percent replacement for the galvanized lines and if a resident has a lead hit uh that's higher than the state average we're gonna have to go all the way to the house uh, that was part of the agreement and replace it but we're hoping obviously that's not the case um the plan looks pretty simple right now. There's going to be a flagging crew, two employees, um, basically two in the hole installing the pipe, uh, one foreman excavation officer or excavation um, guy and operator, and then two to three dump trucks with the drivers. They're hoping that the dump trucks are kind of just in town one at a time. 
Um, they're going to have about 100 feet open at a time, give or take, and one lane of traffic obviously open as much as possible. Um, I'm working to uh, with Aldrich and Elliott. They're supposed to be getting us some information as far as a tentative schedule to get out to business owners. Um, I'm hoping in the next, when the water bill goes out next week, it's next week, yeah, it'll be the consumer confidence report that we have to put out every year. It'll be the new rates. We always issue, we always let people know what they are around this time of year. Also, it'll be some information about the schedule for the project. Um, as I noted in my town manager's report, nobody can stop by this job site because of COVID restrictions. You know, they, they have to test people what if, they're, if they have a fever, this and that. So if you have a question about the job, give me a call, give Tim a call. Um, they'll, you know, either one of us would be happy to answer um, your so question. Trace, when they were marking the, the sidewalks in the street the other day, I went through town a couple of times and the two fellows who were doing it didn't have masks on and they were in close proximity to each other on mm -hmm. a couple of occasions. Uh, are they required to wear you know, the masks and whatnot? Well, each contractor, um, GW Tatro has adopted their own plan. Um, mm -hmm. So whether or not they adhere to it is really gonna be the issue for their superintendent. If they have a, oh, an outbreak of COVID on their site, that's gonna be for them to deal with VOSHA OSHA. Um, there's language in our contract, certainly with them that protects us, but I will certainly let Pete know, uh, that's the foreman that, um, and I'm not sure who was marking, um, but I will let Pete know that um, he had guys that were within, yeah, he told I, him. I saw them twice when I went through town going in and coming out and um, right, you know, right next to each other talking and no masks and. I wonder if it was them or do you think, I wonder if it was dig safe employees. It was whoever, no, because I saw them at the Tatro truck, which was parked okay. up in the, in the town. All right, so, parking so lot. then it was probably, okay, perfect. I'll let him know. Um, yeah. But they they certainly, that was one of the questions that we had asked them, you know, to make sure, and they had adopted their own plan. Um, the Association of General Contractors, the AGC, is one of the only people that have a plan that the um, Agency of Commerce and Community Development have signed off on. So we did ask uh, GW Tatro and they said they had adopted that standard. So okay. but I'll mention it to them. But yeah, they, they have rules and they should adhere to them. Well, I'm just concerned that if there's any town liability or anything. You know. No, no, we made sure that um, that's we're in our contract. So, um, but I will let them know. And so just so you know, if you have questions about the project, call me, call Tim, but you can't stop by the site. Right. which will be the same with any project going on in town this year, for sure. Um, so the other thing is obviously there's going to be some change orders. I mean, I know, you know, as town manager, I have the authority to sign contracts, but I just wanted to make sure you were all aware of that, that you were okay with me signing change orders. Um, obviously things are going to come up in the field, but what's going to happen is they're going to go through the chain, obviously Aldrich and Elliot will review them uh, with GW Tatro, with myself and Tim. So there's obviously a process. By the time I'm signing a change order to affect our contingency, several people have looked at it. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure everybody's understands how that works and that everybody's okay with me um, signing the change orders. That have to be a motion in the minutes to make that good or not? You know, we could. I, I feel like it comes with the territory, but I think we should just to cross all of our T's and dot our I's, if you don't mind. I would move that trees be allowed to sign change orders for this water project. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The only thing I would just ask for, Therese, is if you could just give us a an update on any change orders that do get processed. And yeah, no, once we get <clears throat> what it was for, what them. the dollar amount might be, is this so that we have some knowledge of it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, no, I agree. They'll be, we'll keep you updated on the finances as well. So Therese, uh, you're, you're gonna be letting the business owners know what's happening. Can you also um, let the folks up on Avon Drive and up on the, uh, the other side roads there? Uh, give them well, an update too. We'll let everybody know because when the water bills go out in May, um, along with the the link to the CCR, the new rates, we're gonna I'm gonna put the update in there. That way, everybody on the water sewer system gets the same update. 
Okay, because I know the lady up at the top, Avon Drive, is planning on having some work done up at her place, and she'll need to try to coordinate the scheduling and maybe put it off until after, depending on when the when they're going to be working up in that area. Right. Well, tell her to call the town office and we can okay. make that those arrangements with her because um, depending on if it's the property, I think it is, uh, there's bigger issues that you and I could talk about on the telephone. Oh, <laughs> um, a very but, typical spot. <laughs> but certainly um, they could, um, you know, if someone has questions about that, tell them to call the town office. Will do. Thanks. <clears throat> all right and then the last last thing that we have this evening um is just moving our next meeting which is currently scheduled for may 25th so typically the options that we do is either the monday before or the tuesday after is usually kind of what i can't see my calendar from here is that may 18th next monday Yes. Yeah. So, so what do you, you know, I guess the two choices at this point would either be the 18th, which is next Monday, or the 26th, which would be the Tuesday after the Memorial Day. I would like to do it Monday the 18th, just because I want to get tax bills out. And I have, Tim and I have the water sewer budget done. Um, the only thing I was waiting for is, was for uh, two phone calls back so that for calculating the EU. So it'd be nice for us to be able to have the rate set, even though it doesn't affect the next bill, it affects that letter that goes out. That way everybody gets their bill and it's kind of nice, neat little package. So if we could do Monday at six, that would be great. Um, we would have to do it via Zoom as Chris and I discussed today because we don't know what the governor's gonna say on Friday and uh, we need to advertise it prior to that. So if it may be our last Zoom meeting. If we do that, how long before our next meeting? When, when in June is our first meeting? Our first meeting is the 8th. Oh, okay. That's not so bad. Yeah. There's, um, there's five, five Mondays in June. Okay. So how's everybody, how does people feel about the 18th? Are you available or? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Who knows all the ground? Maybe. <laughs> Governor could rip the Band-Aid off Friday and it could be yeah, a free for all. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it, but. Where are you okay. going to go? Huh? <laughs> Even if he opens up our state, where is anybody going to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a self-employed uh, person, it's not the governor. I have a lot of work. I don't have people that are willing to let me come do it. Oh, yeah. The governor That's... isn't stopping me. It's no. my clients. <laughs> well, hopefully everybody feels a little better about that. And, um, you know, once the, maybe once the governor opens it up a little bit more, Dave. We'll see. Yep. I, I know we're all kind of, I, I don't know. I know some people have said they think that he's just going to lift the ban entirely, but I, I don't, I mean, he's slowly, I can't believe he would, that he's just going to let everybody go, but I don't know. He, I, you know, I guess we'll all find out. He's going to extend the stay at home order. You don't think he is? No. There's getting too much lashback throughout the region for that to happen. Yeah. On, on his talk today, he's talking about extending the not letting dentists to do routine work after the 18th, which supposedly the 18th is going to be the last day. But they're talking about extending that today. Yeah, I wonder. I know there were some businesses that didn't appear to be opening maybe till the middle of June, but I wondered. I guess we'll all have to tune in and find out because I don't know. So, all right. Well, I appreciate that doing it on the 18th. So it'll be, like I said, it'll be Zoom again just because we have to get the agenda out and everything. And it would be too, be too crazy to try to do it in person um, when I don't know what the rule is going to be yet. Okay. And town manager's report, I think we went over a majority of it, but. I think so, yeah, the moats, like I said, the roadside mowing RFP is out. I submitted my structures grant today for the watershed bridge. 
Um, I'm hoping to have my contract signing for Pvine this week. Um, the contractor was just getting the bond documents to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, I feel like that's all underway. And I think um, we're making some good progress. I did speak to my FEMA representative and I think that Pinello Bridge will go in in the spring of 2021. So I'll need an extension, but as I just had to give an extension to the hydraulic study. So, which I don't think will be the end of the world. It'll give me a chance to get it. It'll give us a chance to get a bridge, somebody on board to design it. And we're gonna have to fight with FEMA a little bit about it. We already know that. So I just don't see it going in this fall. I mean, maybe we'll see what the hydraulic study says, but. An extension will be no problem to get, but due to COVID, we certainly have had a couple delays. So, okay. Other than that, I feel like I'm all good. And just kind of wanted to go through the, um, just quickly the FEMA sheet that you had sent in our packet. Oh, sure. Yep. Um, let me flip to it. Sorry, I'm going through my packet. Here it is. Yeah. So, Obviously we're sitting, we're waiting for a bunch of money. I mean, that's pretty much what it boils down to. We've got paid for part of the Geico and we got paid for the federal highway money, which was terrific. Obviously that was a chunk of change. Um, so I signed off on something else again today that I had to approve um, through my FEMA module. We've been dealing with Jaron Borg. I know that they were, um, some, you know, once Jessica puts in the project, somebody down the line reviews it and they had needed some more information that she got from our river engineer. She was looking for some permits. So everything looks like it's in the system and all this stuff. If I go into my FEMA portal, all says that it has been obligated. So it just takes a while to go from being obligated to being for us to get paid for it. So, um, you know, and it, if, we've done all we can do on our end. And if I read the sheet correctly, currently of the work that has been performed, um, our share of that's around 31,000. Does that sound right? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong column. Yes. Yep. Twelve and a half percent yep. of yep. our share. So yep, yep, the town share. Yeah. yeah. Yep, exactly. So that's what we're looking at right now. Obviously, we don't have the big ticket items in there, like the slide or um, and Federal Highway was 100%. We, we lucked out there. Obviously, the big part is going to be Pinello Bridge. And so, right. Yep. Okay. This is what we're sitting on right now. And I have sent, as I've said, when we get the money, I send the money to Mascoma. So, so currently, we've sent uh, a little over 600,000 to Mascoma. Yep. So we're about halfway paid out yeah we i think i oh gosh i should have looked i think i took a draw of so that one three two i think i took a draw of six hundred and fifty thousand. i think so okay all right so that was what you'd ask for so i had gone through the module and those are the numbers so where are we at where we're at. Um, the other thing and in your path, go ahead. I'm sorry, and you may have already said it, but do you know of FEMA wise what the time frame is on receiving the rest of the money that we did last year? No, I asked um, Jessica and I asked, and she just, we don't know. They obligate it. Once FEMA obligates it, it's really up to the state. So I don't know if they've been busy with COVID or what. I, I don't know, Chris, what the turnaround is. I yeah, not. I just didn't know if they thought maybe we'd get it by whatever, July 1 or. I have not heard a peep yeah. out of them. So I'll make a note. I'll send Kim Kankanera a number, a phone uh, email and ask him when we can expect FEMA payments. Okay. All right. The other thing in your packet was, I'm sure you guys saw the Bethel Strong started the community teaching garden and offers free at home garden kits. So I saw Dylan had already um, took up some topsoil so people can get started doing that. Obviously it talks about um, anyone interested in growing their own food can come to the garden to learn how to grow produce. So obviously you'd have a mask. I'm sure they'll do lessons, you know, through social distancing, that sort of thing. But I thought that was a great 
a mm -hmm. nice thing. And I really love the idea of grow another row, grow an extra row. I thought that was terrific. What a great idea. Except for zucchinis, because you'll never eat all of them. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's Trust me, I'll, I'll have a whole bunch of zucchinis in two months. <laughs> there you go. You can donate them to the pick food them fast enough. Well, donate anybody, them to the food with, show. Anybody with an unlocked vehicle, it's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> and you can donate them to the food show. Right. No, we get enough zucchini down there. <laughs> <laughs> Find someone who likes pickling. Uh, yeah. Right. Or zucchini. making zucchini relish. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I have, Chris, for that. Okay, and we had the lost my spot here. Um, select our meeting minutes from the twenty seventh. Anybody have any questions in regards to those? No, oh, look good. Okay, I would entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes as written. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have some other, um, we have some reports in there by Oscar. Uh, yeah, I asked um, to pick something different because you'd want some more information. So this told you how many tickets and how many warnings and contract stops he'd had um, in it. And then. So when it says. Gave you the date and times of the stops. So when he writes down here, total tickets nine and total warnings 15, is that just between those dates or is that year to date? Let's see, I don't know, I don't. I mean, uh, I got it says Sunday, March 1st to Friday, March, uh, May 8th. Yeah, yeah, I saw that and I was like, well, you know, I mean, I don't follow him around town to see where he's at all the time, but I do see him and. Right, I and think I he's saying wow, he that, that many people over, you know, so I was. Didn't know if maybe that was a running total year to date or. I think that I'm reading it the way Paul reads it, that that's his. That that is who he pulled over in though. That's how many people he stopped in eight days. Gotcha. Okay. He's, but, got, he's definitely got a pretty good presence then if he's pulled over. That was the way I read it. I, I agree with Paul, but I mean, I could double check with Oscar, but let me see. He also gave us another. Well, if you look at the detail. Mm -hmm. um here he has this uh oh this is racial data i don't oh, know racial data for the state yeah so that's one two. but it it's first date is all the way at the bottom it's march 1st yeah so that's only like seven stops so i hmm <clears throat> so maybe it's today let me see seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah, so I just, I, I'm a little confused on that, but. No, Chris is right, 29. So I just counted them all. So this is from March 1st. So that's even weirder. Oh, oh yeah, okay, no, so it is. So it's from March 1st, 2020 to May. So it is. Okay. How many stops he's made? 29 stops since March 1st. Through there, I just counted them all. So, so okay. right. So Teresa, on the assessments, 2,343 dollars. If all those go through, how much of that does the town get? <laughs> I bet we get maybe 12%. Yeah, it's going to say two, 300 bucks. Yeah, we don't get much of it. And that's not, if, if you can test it and you and you go to court and yeah. he changes it, you know, he can always reduce yeah. it when you get there. So yeah, it's yeah. pre-adjudication. Pre yeah, we, we get diddly. Mm -hmm. I haven't... Um... I haven't had many complaints this year so far, not to say that there isn't going on, but it's, um, you know, I know when he took over at the beginning of the year, we had a couple of um, certain individuals in town that were doing things they shouldn't be doing, you mm -hmm. know, drug activities at certain residences. And I haven't, I haven't heard as much. I mean, have, has anybody heard, you know, good thing, bad thing? I haven't had anybody complaining recently about tickets or anything. I had mm -hmm. one a while. I've had a couple, but usually I watch the video and it's amazing to me is how many people 
think what happened, say what happened. And then that did not happen. I, I mean, I'm watching the video. I, you mm-hmm. know, and that's usually my thing is I won't discuss it with Oscar. I'll just tell him, let me see the video. Then I know what the, the complaint is. I watch the video and then have the discussion with them. But I have not had a complaint recently, knock on wood. Um, well, I know last, thing- year, last year at this, well, not quite this time, but you know, last year, early last year, we had a combination of quite a bit of speeding issues and, uh, you know, especially like on the corner of Church Street and Pleasant Street there. And then mm-hmm. had, um, we had a couple of individuals in town that were known drug dealers and and some questionable houses. And it doesn't seem like, I, well, at least I haven't had as many calls this year as I did last year. Mm-hmm. We're making headway there or... I think so. I think sure that, I think, well, I'm, I think that's part of it is probably COVID. I'm not sure, you know, probably you're pulling over less people right now, but I haven't heard any complaints. People could be just getting used to them. I will getting used to Oscar in general. I think that there was a totally different personality between him and your prior mm-hmm. constable. Um, I have heard very, a lot of compliments on him. The fact that he follows up with things and, um, people have been happy with their interactions with him. Like today he sent me an email to said and said, you know, you need to publicize um, that the bridge construction headed towards Gilead is back. It's a 35 mile an hour speed zone. I will be enforcing that. We did get some complaints last year about him ticketing people, but it is a work zone and it doubles the fine right there. Mm -hmm. So uh, some people were upset that he was sitting on that area they felt, but that's the job. And so I did give that information to Kelly. She wasn't in the office today, but I am going to ask her to, you know, put that on Facebook. And so I thought that was decent of him uh, to kind of forewarn people that he'd be doing directed patrols out there. Yeah, I had one person complain to me about that. And unfortunately, that person decided to go cruising by him at about 50 uh, in, a, in the 35 zone. So you don't really have much of a leg to stand on, but they were pissed off because he was there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's still Bethel. So, um, you know, and it's, you know, people are working. It's dangerous. You know, people are taking their lives in their hands by working out there. So you need to be minding the speed. So, well, there used to be a couple of places in town where there was obviously drug traffic going on, a lot of people coming and going. And I haven't heard uh, about those situations uh, still being there at this point. So either they've moved on or uh, whatever. Hopefully. Yeah. They're, they're confined to their homes, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. Is that is that uh, bridge construction area marked? Yes. Oh, yeah. It, yeah inside the corn signs. Okay. Boy, I, I missed them today because I went through there today and I was thinking that same thing and I didn't. I remember seeing construction, possible flagger head, but I saw nothing about 35 miles an hour. Uh, it it probably won't say anything. Well, I, I don't. I didn't see it. Re- because in the state of Vermont, the speed limit is as posted. That's the unless they do a speed reduction, which I don't know if they have on that project. Well, I think well, that they, has they did before. I don't, I don't think they have had the 35 mile an hour signs up since they shut down. That's what I'm saying. Project. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, they'll definitely have to be posted. Right down by the drive-in. Yeah. It is, Mo, it's marked by the drive-in. It was last year. Yeah, yeah they're probably going to put it back up now that they're starting back up. I mean, I, I agree. I think that's, we need to do it, but I think we need to, again, dot our I's, cross our T's, make sure those postings are up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll remind him. I'll send him an email tomorrow. That's up to the contractor anyways. I'll just ask him if he's sure they're up. Thank you. You bet. I can hear Brady. He must be getting getting ready to maul you. I can hear his collar jingling. No. No, that's not Brady. He's sleeping. Oh, but somebody that's else. That's Abby. Oh, I can hear somebody. <laughs> that's Abby. Well, now that you said his name, you'll probably wake up now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to Teresa's house for the night. <laughs> so. All right. 
Anything else to come before the board? I'm good. Nope. I'm good. I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, well, have a good night, everybody. Thank you, you, you too. too. You Thanks, safe. guys. Don't forget to feed your dog. Yeah. <laughs> right, have a good night. Good yeah, night. You too. 22. 722. Oh, Lindley. Bye, Lisa. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. I'm getting that exit. Cancel.